Stay tuned. All right, we are in the fourth hour. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Rob Dew. We have a different host almost every day here on the fourth hour, give you a, a mix and mash of what's going on here at InfoWars. But before we go any further, I'm, and, and next, I'm, I'm going to tell you how to get your stuff on InfoWars because a lot of people send me a lot of emails. They want to know, they want critiques, they want reviews, they want to see their stuff on InfoWars. And we love to put your stuff on InfoWars. But before we get there, I want to tell you about two products that I've actually been taking the last couple of days. The first one is Knockout. I take that because I like to stay awake till 2.30, sometimes 3 a.m. in the morning, and I don't wake up a, a really nice guy. Knockout, guys, not brain force. We'll go to that one in one second. Because in order to get to sleep, I, I, I take the Knockout around midnight. I think I'm going to start taking it around 11 because it works, and it works so well. I don't. I feel so good in the morning. I don't even want to get out of bed. I, I want to take an extra half hour of sleep, but it lets me sleep the entire night. I don't wake up in the middle of the night. Um, noises don't wake me up. My wife getting up out of bed to go to the bathroom doesn't wake me up because she's a pregnant female, which I guess I'm sexist for saying that, a pregnant woman. Uh, but in the morning, even before I take coffee, I take brain force. And brain force, I didn't believe it. Anthony had been taking it. And he said, you got to take it. You got to take it. I said, all right, fine. Yesterday, I, I took it for the first time. Unbelievable the results that I had. I mean, immediately my brain went from kind of foggy, groggy to boom, I'm awake, I'm up, I'm looking around, I'm feeling good. Took it again this morning, same exact results, but not a jittery type of uh, amped feeling you get, like if you have too much coffee or too much herba mate or something. Brain force, uh, let me tell you what, that's a one-two punch to regulate your time schedule because time is something we don't have a lot of. It is a finite resource. So we have to make the most of our time. And that is one way to do that, to keep your brain in focus when you need it to and to help get the sleep to uh, rest and recover. That is equally as important. So I encourage you to try Brain Force and Knockout today at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com. You can check it out. You can read all the reviews. I encourage you to do that. Now, the International Academy for Regulatory Medicine and Consciousness Research contacted me via email and said, hey, are you interested in playing some videos that have some revolutionary health information? I said, well, I'm very interested in revolutionary health information. Send them over. Well, they sent them over and they were all in German. And, uh, but they had subtitles. Thank goodness. So usually I like to listen to videos while I'm doing other things because I have limited time. But these actually sat down. There's three videos that they sent me. I watched, uh, I've gone through part one and part of part two. And if you guys can bring up that article, it is titled, let's see here, Scientists Discover Health Breakthroughs from the Russian Space Program. And let me tell you, the Russians, they would send people up in space the astronauts would come down, or cosmonauts would come down, and they would be able to do handstands. And our astronauts were in stretchers. They had to carry them out of the capsules. And there is a difference because the Russians were looking at the physiology and doing things different for their astronauts, providing them vitamins, enzymes, and stuff to keep their bodies going. They were putting magnetic fields in their capsules, I think, before the U.S. was, to regulate that pressure on the inside. So the two individuals there, uh, one of them is Dr. Ettinger. Uh, they talk about all the different health breakthroughs they've been doing by studying the, the scientists that worked on the Russian space program and the things they came up with. And now they're applying those today in Germany. So it's a really interesting. If you're into health news, I encourage you to check out those three videos. I think they're amazing. Uh, I've given them to sent them to a few people here in the office, and they've all just been blown away by the information. A lot of it's validating stuff that that I've thought personally. And it's just amazing to see other people thinking the same thing and that we're all on this journey together on earth. And we're definitely not getting what we should be getting from mainstream media and big pharma. You know, big pharma wants to make you a lifelong customer. I'm into empowering people to, you know, not spend, you know, you don't want to spend all your money on healthcare and stuff like that. Now, I do want to take some calls. And that's 800-259-9231. Uh, Specifically on this, there seems to be some controversy going on with the group uh, trying to repeal SB 277. Here's the first article. Group submit signatures to repeal California vaccine law. And this is the, uh, they wanted to repeal SB 277, a group they needed 366,000 signatures. That's a lot of signatures. Uh, and so they, that was, uh, the deadline was Monday to turn it in. Now, Tim Donnelly, 
I think we've put a couple articles up of his on there on uh, on Infowars before, but uh, September 29th, Tuesday, Donnelly said that there's been uh, the group has faced strong opposition from the pharmaceutical lobby, and the referendum was sabotaged from without and within by powerful forces from its very inception. Never before in my political experience have I witnessed such extensive and determined opposition to a campaign. Donnelly said in a statement. I've got some tweets about this that people are sending me. We need to look into this. So if you have any information specifically about the signatures and what went wrong with SB 277 to get that repealed, please give me a call at 800-259-9231. At, at the uh, conclusion of this segment, and we had that short five-minute segment, I would like to get you on to talk about it. Now, on to this Next article, top five videos you want to watch before you get your flu shot. We are in the midst of flu season, and they are going to be peppering you left and right. The banners have gone up at every CVS, every Walgreens in the country to get your flu shot. You go into Randall's grocery store here locally. They want to give you 10% off your grocery bill if you just get jabbed with a little aluminum, a little mercury, make you feel better. The top video on here is not one of ours. The, the other four are InfoWars produced videos, but the top one here is report the flu shot in pregnant women by an individual. He's a writer and researcher named Jeffrey Jackson. And he has taken our information, put, put it in his own video, and that's something that we encourage people to do. We encourage you to grab it from the different networks out there. We have prisonplanet.tv, or if you're a member, you can download the videos. If you're on our YouTube channel, you can download the videos there and use them in your own reports. Because we may put out a 40-minute video, and you may want to put out a five-minute video on a certain subject that we touch on in a video, and we encourage you to do that. Well, that's what Mr. Jackson did. So I got with the writers today. I said, let's do a flu shot video montage article, and let's put his video on the top and see if we can get him some views. Because it's very important that we all stand together on these core issues, especially of health freedom. So I want to play his report now. I don't know if I'm going to play the whole thing. I might cut out in parts of it. But you'll see where he actually grabs some of uh, some of content that we produced here at InfoWars. So roll that video. In 2006, the CDC's position regarding vaccinating pregnant mothers changed. Traditionally thought to be an unnecessary risk to the unborn child, the vaccinating of pregnant mothers opened the floodgates for new avenues of profit. The willful ignorance of a mainstream medical community forced rapid learning curves for parents attempting to protect their children. Doctors and scientists have been left shaking their heads in disbelief at the recklessness of this policy by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. During pregnancy, they're warning women to get a flu shot. The flu shot then will be the priming shot. It primes the baby's microglia. Then at birth, get a hepatitis B shot, overreaction. Then at two months, what happens to the poor baby? Well, you go to the pediatrician and say, well, time for uh, six shots. Now that child's getting six times as high a dose of just the adjuvant. Some of these vaccines have three different antigens in them. So now we're talking about dozens of immune stimulations, all in one city. Somewhere in the fog, injecting doctors and nurses following their superiors' orders lost the moral high ground. Ethics, informed consent, and humanity was lost in the rapid unconscious push to blindly keep up with ever-increasing vaccine schedules written by compromised regulatory agencies directed by drug company profit. And you and I sat in a in a room with all of our on call staff, physicians and practitioners like, oh, wow, this is so embarrassing. This 25 weeker never actually required a breathing tube and going on the vent, you know, after he was born. He was so strong, but we gave him his two month vaccinations and he got intubated last night. Ha ha ha. Oops, how embarrassing. Like, it's funny. I mean, wow. the step down units are calling the NICU saying, hey, we're going to go ahead and give these four babies. They're two month shots today. Make sure you have beds ready because we all know they're going to have increased breathing difficulty, feeding and digestion wow. difficulty, uh, apnea, you know, forgetting to breathe and bradycardia. This is what goes on. Real journalism and voices for truth warning the public are historically low given what is at stake. The health of a new generation threatened by a massive PR push by news agencies who have fallen victim to drug company profit. Then you have the press which again is compromised. Uh, I, I spoke to a news division president this week, I had breakfast with him, and he said that 70% of news division revenues during non-election years are coming from the pharmaceutical companies. 
So you have the press that has been compromised. You, they're the biggest advertisers now. They get about a 3.4 to 5, 5 billion a year to, to press advertising. The fact that your injecting doctor or nurse does not speak about or even show you the actual vaccine insert is a violation of the ethics and laws governing there medical. There you go. There And there's the vaccine insert right there. And I encourage you to read the actual insert. It says it hasn't been tested right there. Has not been established for pregnant women or nursing mothers. Right there in writing. Yet they sit there and market it towards pregnant women. That is their untapped market right now is pregnant women. And you notice it's not even 10 years old that they've been saying pregnant women should be getting their flu shot. It's despicable. And people write about it. Do you see that article? Pregnancy is the best time to get your vaccines. I mean, these people are psychotic. They are psychotic. So to watch the rest of that, you can go to the article, top five videos to watch before you get your flu shot. Pass that around. People love top five, top 10 lists. And we, we could have put a better headline on there. I don't really like top, head, top five, top 10 headlines, but people read those and people watch those. So maybe they'll watch some of these. There's some uh, other great videos there. We had Leanne McAdoo going and pose as a pregnant lady, and they were pushing the flu shot on her. It was crazy. We're going to be back with more, and hopefully I'll take some of these calls here on SB277 on the referendum. This is Rob Dew, and you're watching The Alex Jones Show. This is the Overdrive Hour. I have a couple callers specifically about SB277, which is in California. Interestingly enough, both callers, well, one's from New York and one's from New Jersey. So I'd like to see some callers from California call in. You got a couple minutes here. I'm going to take calls in this segment. Um, but as I was playing the video before about how they want to push the flu vaccine on pregnant women, I made a faux pas. I'm sorry. Trannies now want me to say birthing individual instead of pregnant woman. Ooh. So that's from Kit Daniels. Transsexuals want you to use the phrase birthing individuals instead of pregnant women because according to them, the latter promotes trans hatred. I did not know that. I have no hatred towards anybody. Um, LG. BT activists have convinced the Midwives Alliance of North America to stop referring to their clients as women and mothers. Instead, call them pregnant people and birthing individuals so transsexuals won't get offended. Well, pregnant women, pregnant women, pregnant women. Hope that didn't offend you. Here's another quick tip. When you send us video, don't hold your phone like this. Turn your phone this way and then shoot the video. If you Turn it this way, you're going to send me a little video and a big screen. I've had a couple people do me, they send me videos, like, what do you think of this video? And I say, first thing, just turn your camera this way. And I'm serious, it makes a big difference. Check it out for yourself, do your own research to that online. And while I was looking at that, uh, Jeffrey Jackson, the guy who uh, we played his video earlier, sent me an article, CDC spends $1 million to increase adult flu vaccination rates, flu shot to be mandatory, you guys can get that there on my phone. There it is. So they're spending a lot of money to make sure you take that flu shot because they're really concerned about your health, right? That's why they spend, and that's why they want to make it mandatory because they want to make sure you're healthy. They really care about you so much. Has nothing to do with the money they make. No, that's all. So Alex in New York, you're on the line. What do you have to say about SB277? Uh, hi, Rob. I'm actually from California. I just uh, I'm in New York right now, but um, I wanted to say how we avoided vaccinating my sister uh, to go to school and how we plan to do it in the future, too. And all my cousins and brothers, they're doing the same thing. Um, I realized by saying this, it's going to kind of put a... I, I'm probably the system knows this, but anyways, we basically got the doctor... Our family doctor to just say that he vaccinated. He signed up on the form, and uh, it's basically we we lied. Wow, you committed uh, but, a crime against the vaccine well, I, community. I think they're committing a crime, so we gotta fight back. Exactly, we gotta protect the, ourselves. You're right. Go ahead. But as far as the signatures, um, me and my uh, family members, we went out to sign them. And as far as from what I understood was very hard was they had specific location to go and sign. And so it made it very difficult. Like you had to go get out of your way to go and sign the, the petition and you had to like look for places. And it was very like bizarre. I usually it's very easy to sign the petition. 
in California, but this time it was like you had to go way out of your way into some part of LA or whatever. Yeah, Mark, Mark Dice could have probably got all 366,000 signatures.